Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy and today we'll take a look at everything brand new on Android 15 Beta 2. Now there's a lot of brand new updates and changes with Beta 2. When it came down to Beta 1, there wasn't anything really changing, just some of the bug fixes. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at the tablet towards the end of this video. We'll cover everything with the Google Pixel phone devices first, then we'll move over to the tablet itself. You can see that there is a lot of stuff going on. That's because you're able to do desktop windowing so you can have multiple windows. And you also do have, finally, your lock screen widget. So we'll cover the tablet here in just a second, but let's first cover the Google Pixel phone devices. Now, first off, what you'll be able to see is when you take a look inside of settings, you'll be able to notice that there is a change or update when it comes down to how the settings looks. You'll also be able to notice that I do have a running timer up here. That's because I'm doing a screen record. And now you can just tap on that little icon to actually stop the recording. So you wouldn't actually have to pull down your notifications panel, which could show some sensitive information. So we're gonna cover everything and so much more in this video. So first off, taking a look at the redesigned settings page. So originally you'll have a full black background everything all just kind of listed on out. You also have your profile icon up over there, which is all of your Google settings. And what you have now is a darker gray with kind of a medium gray color with white. So this is kind of like a three tone. This one over here was kind of two toned. That little icon is now not on the top right hand side. It's straight up just your search settings, but your little Google settings is just gonna sit here. So pretty much that logo went to right here. And now you kind of have layers of colors and this one's kind of all grouped together, categorized all together. Reminds me a little bit of Samsung One UI but here's the redesigned settings page. Now, before I go too deep into everything else, I just wanna show really quick a fast overview of what was coming from the release notes. So this update here is beta two. It was released on September 12th. The build number ends with 823.009. It has that September security patch. Now, along with everything I'm gonna show you in this video here of what all is new, there is a lot of resolved issues, a lot of bugs that have been fixed, some stuff going along with Google Maps, also with GPS and battery usage, an issue with 80% you know, charge limit. They also fixed a few things when it comes down to Bluetooth connectivity, NFC-based uh, payments. So there's a lot of stuff that they were able to fix with this update along with bringing brand new features. Now moving on to updated feature number two, this is where if you were to do a screen recording and it doesn't matter if it's one app or the full entire screen, we'll just do the full entire screen. Now there is one thing that I kind of wish that they can maybe add in just a small little added option in maybe inside of this screen here. But when you start recording in the older version of Android you know, 14 or older version of Android 15, you have a small little icon letting you know that you are recording, which some people may prefer a smaller icon. And that's one thing that I kind of wish that maybe you can kind of toggle it or tap it to make it bigger or smaller. But here's the older version. You have your small little icon on the top right hand side. You're not able to stop the recording unless if you swipe down to show some sensitive information, you hit on stop. So if you had notifications, it would actually show up in that screen recording that you would have to edit out. But now you have it on the top left-hand side. It's a larger pill shape. It shows the actual time of recording, which maybe could help you in the future. If you remember something really cool happened right around the 50 second mark, maybe that's something to note. But all you can do here is now you can tap on that and then finally hit stop recording. So you wouldn't have to pull down your notifications panel showing maybe some possible sensitive information, some text messages or some details in an email. Feature number three that has been added or changed. This one is a fast keyboard switch. So down over here on beta two, you now have this little icon. It's a little globe. You can see that there's nothing over here. So this is a way that you're able to change your keyboards super quick. So I can go between my voice typing back to my little regular G board, or if I had a different uh, keyboard as well, I'd be able to just simply tap here, switch between either one I want to. So it's just a really quick, fast toggle switch between your keyboards. Feature number four that was added in is inside of your battery. And this is where not only do you have your adaptive charging, but you can also limit it to 80%. So when you go inside of your battery, let's say we go over here inside of your settings, you go inside of battery. So you do have your adaptive charging. You either just turn it on or turn it off. Right here, it is now called charging optimization. This is where you'll be able to find your adaptive charging and limit to 80%. So adaptive charging, pretty much if you're one of those who charges it at night as you're sleeping, it'll go all the way up to 80%. 
It's going to stop charging. And then about an hour, hour and a half before you wake up and it knows your schedule. It could be also looking at your timer. It just knows when you pick up your phone every morning, pretty much an hour before you're waking up, it's going to start charging again to ensure you're at hundred percent by the time you get out of bed and you grab your phone. The other option here, which is brand new is limit to 80%. Your phone will only charge to 80% and then it's done. It's kind of a way to kind of just extend the battery lifespan so you're not just full charging going through every single battery life cycle every time you go to bed. Feature number five that was added in is a intensity line when it comes down to color correction. So when you head over into both of these versions here, you're scrolling down, you'll take a look at your accessibility. Now inside of accessibility, one of the options, you can see how all of the settings kind of changed where this one was towards the top, this one is now towards the bottom. But when you go inside of your uh, color and motion, once inside of color and motion, you'd be able to go inside of your color correction. And when, let's just say that we turn this one on, right? As you scroll on down a little bit, you'll notice that you have all of the different color correction options, but you also have this intensity slider. So this intensity slider is not a part of older Android, but it is a part of Android 15 beta two. So you can just see what it's doing for the intensity for any of these different options down here. Now, before we go inside of the tablet, I wanna show you one thing that is new part of Android 15 beta two, but I can't really show you any of it because I'm not a developer, but one of the things that they are working on and testing and getting ready for us is the 16 kilobit web pages. So when you go inside of your settings and you take a look at your developer options, once you have developer options unlocked, you'll actually have an option down over here that is called boot with 16 KB, which is 16 kilobit pages. So pretty much it's able to be a more powerful page, a faster page and more details, more information. So it's just more powerful. The only thing I'm not going to unlock my bootloader. Um, and there's a bunch of details right here. You can read it and don't worry if you do actually, you know, tap on this one and you hit on okay, you're not doing anything with your device, but it just kind of gives you some details. And when you are actually a part of the 16 KB mode, so the 16 kilobit mode, you are able to switch back and forth between four kilobit and 16 as well. So it's a way that you're able to test everything that is going on when it comes down to this brand new feature, which hopefully will be unlocked for everybody else. Uh, by the time this thing is finished, which should be rolled out during the month of December. And now moving over to the tablet, you now finally have your lock screen widgets. So this one was here from before, taken away, and here it is again back. Now, the first time that you actually take a look at this page, you will see this little notification over here. It means that you can add and remove and reorder any of the widgets in this space. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dismiss it because what's gonna happen is maybe you accidentally did hit dismiss. Now this is what it looks like, but how are you able to make any of these changes? So what you wanna do is you want to press and hold on the screen. That press and hold will give you this option over here, which is called customize widgets. So for customized widgets, you do have to unlock your device because widgets do give, you know, personal details and information, whatever application it's kind of showing. So pretty much what it's stating is that when you tap on a widget, you'll have to unlock your phone and all that good stuff. So, or, or the tablet. So in this screen here, what you can do is you can press and hold on any of these widgets. You can actually bring it up and you can get them removed. I just want to show you what is there from the get go. This is nothing that I have added in. This is exactly what shows up the moment you turn this thing on. So pretty much what you can do is if you want to press and hold you can rearrange you can put them anywhere and everywhere you want to if there's one of these that you do not want you press and hold and you remove it now if you want to add in a widget you just hit the option for add widgets here are some of your suggestions you have your gmail weather and memories you also have this one over here which is note collection and recently played so you also have a battery widget so if you wanted to add this one in there boom we have that one added in let's say that we wanted to add in some more widgets you also have calendar you have your Chrome, you have clock, and there's a lot of different options for a clock. You also have your contacts. So you have digital well-being, Google Drive, there's your Gmail. You have Google, so you can have any of these sitting up there. So you have routines as well as the finance watch list, Google News, and a whole bunch of other really nice stuff. You also have you know your YouTube music, you have pixel weather, whichever weather looking widget you would like to use, you'd be able to place it there. And now this is going to be your lock screen widget. So pretty much it's going to be right up over here. And again, if you want to go inside of any of these, you do have to unlock it again, especially if you have the option of Gmail, that means that if someone taps it, then they know your code, then they can get in your Gmail. So that's just the reason why you'd have to unlock it every single time you tap on any of those widgets. So once you update it, swipe it over to the right hand side, and here is your lock screen widget page.
And now for the bigger feature, this is where you have your freeform windows or that desktop windowing. But in order for this to actually happen, you have to go inside of your settings. And then inside of settings, you want to go all the way down. You want to take a look at your system and you also want to unlock developer options because once you unlock developer options, as you scroll on down, you're going to find an option or a little category that is for apps. So we're going to keep on scrolling down. Here is input. This one is drawing. And as you get closer to apps, which should be right around here, you're going to find the option for free form windows. It's underneath the option for tear. So once you see tear, you know you're super close and here's the option enable freeform windows and once you turn this on you'll just have to reboot your device it's going to just reboot your your tablet into a completely different option instead of applications opening up to the full screen it's now going to be slightly smaller to where you now have this little window icon and this right here is what you're able to do if you want to open it up with, with split screen or if you want this to be opened up you know with all of these different windows and such so it's you're going to see that your tablet will look different at reboot and that's because you enabled your freeform windows now once the freeform windows is opened now you're good to go any of these applications that you open up on the bottom you'd be able to let's say just kind of press and hold on that here's that little window and when you place it inside of this window just like this it's going to open up looking like that so what we can do here is you can also re resize the window so you can have your window whatever size you would want it to be you can also move this thing around uh, if you tap on this little icon there this is where you can make it big this is your split and this is going to be pretty much this little window that you see so if you want it to be the bigger frame this is what the bigger frame looks like but you can still see you got that little line up over there so again all you got to do is you can just bring this on down you put it into this little window make this as big as you would like then you also have all your different applications down over here so if i wanted my my little running application of calculator i can just pull it right up if i go right back you know right back there you can see it's covered i can bring it right on back other application i would want to open up i can just open this little file let's just go into like my files right here so for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this around, make this one just a little bit smaller. So this is just kind of showing you everything that you can do with all of these different windows. So I'm just going to hit on got it. Boom, boom, boom. So this is where you can switch between all of them and you can do it down here. Now, here's the other thing that you might want to know. So this little bar that you saw on the bottom, let's say that we open up an application. What you can do right here is if you press and hold on this, this is where you can actually always have the taskbar up. So if I go into this application, now you can see a line on the top and a line on the bottom. This is the one that will make me go into all my windows. Now, one thing that I do need to show you with this is that when you do open up an application, you'll see this little bar down here. So this is like a task bar. If you press and hold on this line, you can either have it always show or have it just pop up and then it kind of disappears. So as you are using whatever you are using, you can also be able to pull this right back up. So if you want this to always be here, you can always have this taskbar show. It's just going to be a little bar on the bottom. And then that means that you can always find your other application. So anytime that you ever want to switch between applications, you can switch right over here. You'd be able to switch over here. And then also too, anytime you just pull down this little line and then now you're in your little pop-up window. Now here's the other thing too. So I have a few different windows that are opened up. Let's say that I go to the home page. It is actually saved as one of my recents. Now, what'll happen is you'll see all these applications. It has the full little icon on the top. That just means if I was to go over here, now it's gonna be, you know, whatever that option was. And that icon there just means that it's a little free form. This is the, the desktop windowing. So if I tap there, it's gonna open everything right back up, which is again, pretty cool. Now, what'll happen though, is that if you ever go up over here and then if let's just say that you, you know, clear out of just everything, or maybe you went over here and you hit on clear all, you're not going to have that again. You're just restarting all the applications over. So that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover in today's video. You can see, you know, the newer version of the settings. You saw the new version of screen recording. You saw all of these lock screen widgets. You're able to see all of the windowing. So that is everything that is brand new with this update. Even showed you a few things that I couldn't even show you as I'm not a developer, but we have 16 kilobit pages coming soon, which is going to be more powerful and quicker to use. So hopefully you guys have appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left hand side. And if you like this video, the more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.